Hi, I'm Geeta Nandikot Kaur, Vice President for Conferences for Asia, Middle East and Africa with Information Security Media Group. And I'm pleased to invite Derek Mankey, Chief Security Strategist and Global Vice President of Threat Intelligence at Fortinet to our studios today. Thank you for having Thanks. me. It's great to speak with you again. Yeah, yeah. it's a pleasure having you again, yeah, Derek. Absolutely. So Derek, tell me one thing. You have been tracking cybercrime over decades now. Yeah. And uh, when you look at the threat landscape today, and what stands out most to you, and what's fundamentally changing the way the attacks have been executed? I would say in a nutshell, we're seeing these attacks being turbocharged now. I think if we look back a year ago, when you know we were discussing what's on the horizon, what's next, there wasn't a lot of use of these uh, tools and technology to speed up the attacks. We saw that the window of attacks shrinking, but not at a large scale. Mm -hmm. And today, uh, particularly in the last you know, uh, six months, second half of the year, it's really starting to accelerate because of this turbocharged nature. We're seeing um, attackers shifting left of boom. So on in, in one hand, they're becoming more targeted in nature, but that targeted nature took a long time in the past. And now it's being turbocharged because they have uh, technology to weaponize, to be able to help them upskill and up level and do that. Yeah. So you mentioned a very interesting aspect about shifting left. Yeah. Now, most um, technology partners, the strategy around shift left, I think that's not working because attackers have started moving towards that and yeah. trying to focus on that. So having said that, uh, how is it uh, looking in APAC, particularly in Southeast Asian region? I understand the attack surface is expanding, yes. the OT attack surface yes. is expanding. So what's your take? Yeah, so the attack surface is certainly expanding rapidly. Um, you know, we have, uh, you mentioned OT, but on operational technology itself and IOT to IIOT, the industrial internet of things, um, even mobile the devices. And this has been a big shift. Um, we, we first started, you know, from a threat landscape perspective in, in Asia Pacific as well, we saw um, initial uh, experiments, I would say, from cyber criminals. I'm talking 15 years ago when smartphones really first started coming on scene. But we didn't see an explosion of attacks or malware on these devices, a big focus for attackers. Today, what's shifting in that threat landscape in Asia Pacific and here in Singapore is really a target more on mobile phones. So yes, the operational technology, the IIoT, but mobile phone devices themselves. So we're seeing an unprecedented amount of attacks and new discoveries of, of vulnerabilities and waiting get into iOS, uh, into Apple devices, into Android devices. Why? because these devices are now integrated into security ecosystem. So mobiles are now being targeted also as a weak part of that security chain. Um, shifting left, the targets in Asia Pacific have been uh, disruptive. If I, if I look at the first half of this year in Asia Pacific, a lot of the attacks were uh, impacting services. So we're talking about manufacturing, number one, still in targets, healthcare, other digital government services that have been taken offline for a while. In Singapore, it's a little different. And I think it's because of the, the national strategy here, the focus of all these conversations we've had in the last couple of years, where it was actually a negative growth rate we saw in disruption activity. But with that said, I think here in Singapore now, we're seeing attackers going back to the drawing board. They're very active. We see a lot of reconnaissance shifting left, a lot of scans, and they're trying to now employ some of that weaponized technology. Yeah, you brought another uh, aspect around uh, integration. The yeah. challenge around, the big challenge today is about how you integrate. You have so many tools. You have now the AI, the disruptive technologies coming in, invading yeah. your um, organization. Correct. How are you, how are they managing to uh, streamline the entire integration process? Yeah, integration is critical because um, the, it's never been as true as it, as it is today with the pain points that organizations face for um, the, a security stack that has been built mm -hmm. for the last decade. Uh, yeah. So on average, a lot of the organizations we look at and go into, uh, there are 40 to 50 plus tools, security mm. tools and other appliances we see running in a stack. So because of that reason, integration is key to get the visibility to apply threat intelligence to it, to be in that, that true converged platform. Um, IT and OT is another part where you have these two different re reporting streams and not, not uh, integration between those two departments. There could be 
There could be an event happening on the NOC, on the networking side, on the IT side, that is affecting the SOC, right? It's affecting the o OT environments and all the things that operate there. But if they're in different streams and you don't have that visibility and control, it can go unnoticed. So integration is a really big thing. At Fortinet, we've always been serious about this. We've uh, uh, spent a long time now creating an integrated ecosystem. We have over 700 technology partners we work with, APIs, special use cases to integrate into those stacks and, and converge. Convergence is a real thing now. It's happening. The technology is there. So another layer that's added is about AI. And AI is a double-edged sword, right? Yes. So how do you think, uh, is it really being used uh, in the way that has to be used and which can uh, really prevent the growing attacks or, yeah. or maybe is it a hype? Where are we now? Um, I think there's always a lot of hype, <laughs> always. Let's be honest with that. Um, but at the same time, the reality is, um, if we talk about the two different teams again, the blue team, it is absolutely there. Um, you walk around the show floor here, uh, you will see the technology there. Uh, we've been developing it for 15 years at Fortinet AI and Assist. And, and those tools are absolutely, I would say, essential today for the SOC because of just the sheer amount of threats that we see, the, um, you know, the more effective attacks that are happening. Um, the, the defenders need that to upskill their analysts, right? We've talked about skills gap before. Just like attackers are shifting left, the blue team is shifting left as well, too. So what, what used to be a traditional role for an analyst uh, in a security operations center, let's say analyzing malware, uh, adding tickets to the system, uh, their role is now changing, right? They're getting into different data analytics techniques into modern roles because the AI systems on the blue team are effectively replacing the day-to-day. -day. It allows response now in, in minutes uh, seconds and sometimes to these, uh, to these attacks. So it's critical. It helps reduce costs of operation. It helps to fill the skills gap. It helps to protect against these modern attacks that are happening. In reality, you, you asked what's happening on the hype and the, and the attacker side. Um, they're not as advanced yet, which is a good news story. I think, I really think still the blue team, we are, if you properly integrate and use AI on a blue team perspective, you can absolutely have an advantage over the attacker. The attackers are just starting to do this now. So we. So are you yeah. seeing any kind of uh, use case here where your customers are really leveraging AI and trying to build a kind of measurable outcome? Yes, absolutely. And that measurable outcome is usually in the ROI discussion, right? How many threats am I mitigating? How many am, am I seeing? KPIs on dashboards into that average response? Am I keeping it in check to a small window? All of those things are very important. Yeah, yeah. And again, the attackers, they're still operating in that five-day window of attack. So they're moving faster. Well, on the blue team, we can move faster as well. And you brought uh, interesting um, cases around how OT environment, IT, OT convergence, and it's becoming quite vulnerable to attacks. So having said that, uh, how are these threats evolving? Any defensive architecture that is being built? Yep. Uh, so the threats are evolving through services now. So crime as a service. This is something we're seeing with more AI-enabled attacks. There's tools like Fraud GPT, Worm GPT, this dark web chatbots mm -hmm. that allow any attacker to ask questions and it will immediately come back with recommendations, tool sets, all the things that are needed to actually make that attack more effective and faster. Uh, so practical defenses, though, what we're finding is um, multi-factor authentication, uh, simple things, but MFA, moving into zero trust environments, that's very key because a lot of these attacks, unfortunately, are still successful off of stolen credentials that are either fished or stolen and then stuffed in for attacks. Having some simple measures like that help. The IT and OT conversion, so SOAR and SIM in a single integrated pane of glass is also okay. also very that, important. That's uh, quite interesting to see that. And are customers really uh, building this kind of architecture? They are. Using? Absolutely, yep. They have been building it now. It's becoming more critical, like I said, especially on the integration piece. Um, there's different levels of maturity. Yeah. So when we talk about the visibility and integration, that's typically step one, level one. 
Sim and Soar and Playbooks, step two, and then more advanced SOC, like deception environments, that would be at a third level. So it's, it's a journey, as we always say. But so what both. I say is we have grown. The technology has evolved, Sim, Soar, XDR, yep. and mm-hmm. then now AI is really uh, put everything under the cover, and AI is really taking, gaining momentum there. It is. That's throwing up a major challenge. So the solutions, everything we talked about is valid. The challenge is the rapid adoption of it, the data data privacy, uh, securing the LLM models themselves. Mm -hmm. This is something we're looking at uh, with Fortinet already. We've done the protection AI for 15 years. We've done the generative AI to help the SOC for the last three years. And now uh, the latest generation we're focused on is secure AI. So securing the systems themselves from attacks. That's interesting. So it's like um, contactless kind of, you you just grab. Exactly. So how how do they address a lot of false positives might be? Yeah, so false positives, like when we're talking about the AI systems, keep in mind, it's, it's, it's still a, what I'm seeing is it's very much a zero trust approach with AI still. You have this technology that's been rapidly adopted, and now all of a sudden, InfoSec teams, a lot of organizations simply cut it off. It's a default denied, just like we saw with applications in the past. It's happening with AI now. But as we get more security controls around that to understand baselines of data flow, is this out of the baseline? Is this going to an authorized uh, AI engine? Those sorts of inspection points are now being put in. So that helps with the false positives because it's not uh, in production environments being used for that. It's usually for day-to-day operations on a human base level uh, to happen. With that said, on the horizon in the next year, uh, it'll be interesting as we move to more autonomous approaches. Interesting. And you have been a global strategist also and advocating collective defense. Yes. So how does it look like? it's, this is the favorite part of my job, I think, doing the co- collective defense because it's, we need to do it against the attackers. It's looking better. Um, we doing this for, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, it's a lot of commitment from organizations. That's resources from us, from Fortinet, resources from law enforcement, seconded individuals. We've made great progress. So some examples, uh, Fortinet, we founded Cybercrime Atlas mm-hmm. under the World Economic Forum. Um, last, Last year, we released an impact report where based off intelligence packages, four of them that we process mapping that cyber criminal ecosystem, we worked with law enforcement partners like Interpol, uh, Interpol that led to Operation Serengeti. This was an arrest, uh, a campaign that led to over a thousand arrests. It recovered about $45 million US in funds from victims. That's big. We did the same thing at a larger scale. We have over 70 volunteers in our organization, Cybercrime Atlas now. And uh, just recently uh, in Q3, Operation Serengeti 2.0 wrapped up. The arrests were even more, 1,200. The amount of money recovered for victims was double at 90 million. So there's good progress being made with that. Cybercrime is still estimated to be almost a $24 trillion industry in two years. So there's more work to be done, but we're making good progress. Interesting. So do you see organizations creating the champion AI champion or cybersecurity champions with it to tackle the growing attack, the sophisticated attack surface? Yeah, I think it's it's not just one champion. Uh, so there's teams being rolled out for this, right? And a lot of it is, they're not new roles. There are some new roles when it comes to AI officers and other things uh, in organizations. But the reality is a lot of that the work, the operational work, it's being embedded into existing streams. Again, I mentioned the analyst shifting left and so forth. Um, There is a very big focus on it. And a lot of organizations now, the conversations day to day are on how do we control this? How do we give access? It's just like security and applications. It comes down to identity. It comes down to being able to enforce policies on those identity, no matter anywhere you are. So it's really becoming just a new aspect of the zero, zero trust strategy. So as we progress into 2026, we are just last in the last quarter. Yeah. So what are the new trends that you think are very critical and that the CISO security leaders need to watch out for 
and prepare themselves. So we talked about uh, OT networks. I think um, the the spread is going to be larger. Um, as I said before, manufacturing has always been the number one target, but now we're seeing it start to go into many other aspects, right? We're starting to see it on um, healthcare and a lot of other, you know, uh, uh, operational technology environments. So that's one thing. The other thing that's on the horizon is more uh, autonomous agents. So we talk about agentic AI. That's a real thing on the, on the blue team side. We're already seeing indications of this on the red team side. We're seeing early indications of agents that are going out to find vulnerabilities or known vulnerabilities and create proof of concept exploit uh, code for them. I think that whole cyber criminal ecosystem, we're gonna see agents on the dark web an agent, an AI agent selling access to systems that is compromised. Mm -hmm. These are real scenarios that are not too far off from the future. So how do we prepare for that technology? It comes back to the use of AI, threat intelligence, integrating that into the security operations center. Um, even going through that level one, level two journey of the SOC now is critical, I would say, because without that, we see all these more effective attacks happening from the attackers. So do you see them building a governance layer across these yeah. AI, uh, the SOC and others? Yes. Any yes. innovations there? Yeah, we are seeing governance, but on the governance side, you need to enforce it, which means you need that sort of technology to look at that, the AI visibility. So that's why I said it's, it's a big focus. Uh, but then also the, the last thing I'll say is the um, CTEM, so Continuous Threat Exposure Management. Mm -hmm. So this is something where AI is a great use because Traditionally in the past, this was all human driven. It would be budget for once a year for a red team to come in to simulate and run attacks, give an assessment, and that's the risk. It's a snapshot. Now with these tools, you can afford, organizations can afford to continuously run these, right? Continuously running new adapted attacks, finding those holes. That's what I mean about the shifting left with AI. It's very powerful. Um, and so it's not just a snapshot in time, it's a continual risk assessment. Metrics and reports from those continuous risk assessments can be easily sent up to the board level now for more visibility, more investment if needed. Great. Thank you so much, Derek, for joining us today and highlighting a few critical aspects around building defenses against digital disruption. Thank you. As I said, there's, um, there's hope. We just need to act now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So you've been watching Derek highlighting a few critical aspects around how do you build defenses against growing attack surface. And again, for ISMG, this is Geetan Nandikotko. Thanks for watching.